Fiona in Fang Chang. I hope I'm <laughs> saying it right from uh, the University of, uh, well, from Vexin Shengi Jiao College yes. in Taiwan. Yeah. Uh, I will. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm, I'm Fiona. Xinfang Zhang from Taiwan, Weixin Shenjiao College. As you may see, I'm a religious person. This is our uniform uh, from Weixin Shenjiao. And I am an insider. However, I try to do my research from an outsider perspective, oh, um, although it's difficult. Uh, I would like to uh, be an in-between position. That's what I try. Okay, today I would like to present the revelation, ritual, and the ethnic interaction, uh, the religious practice of Taiwan with Xin Shen Jiao for, for cross trade peace and world peace. So you can see the picture with all the masters and lecturers in Weixin Shenjiao. Weixin Shenjiao literally means the sagely teachings of the heart. And uh, today, it, uh, it founded in Taiwan since 1981. There are about 30, 000, uh, 300,000 family believers. Okay, I would like to go through the summary of the presentation. Firstly, I will introduce the histor historical background, the conflict in cross-trade relations. Then is the, the impact of Chinese cultural identity on new ethnic religions in Taiwan. Then I will introduce features of Weixin Shenjiao, including the founder, Grandmaster Hun Yuan Chan Shi, and its Supreme God, Gui Gu Zi, and the fundamental beliefs of the Chinese nation of Weixin Shenjiao. Lastly, I will explain why is the explanation for the contradiction of the Chinese nation by Weixin what has been done? Okay, the first, the conflict between the two sides of the Taiwan's trade. I will show, I would like to show you the, the, the picture. In 1945, there war, was a civil war between KMT, Kuomintang, and CPC. And then in 1948, the martial law began due to the civil war. Then in 1949, it's a crucial time because KMT, the national government, they defeated in the civil war and retreated from mainland China to Taiwan. Then one China has been separated uh, into two, and one is in Taiwan and the other is the uh, People's Republic of China. Then in 1966 to 1976, there was a cultural revolution in mainland China. Uh, on the contrary, in Taiwan, we launched the Chinese Cultural Renaissance movement. So you can see in the PRC region, they launched the Cultural Revolution that destroyed Chinese traditional relics and culture. And in Taiwan, the uh, Republic of China um, they unveiled the Chinese cultural renaissance to maintain Chinese culture and see herself as the heir of Chinese he orthodoxy uh, in order to establish its legitimacy of its rule. Yeah. And the cultural, the Chinese cultural uh, renaissance movements has a large impact on our people because it has been promoted for 10 years and is deeply rooted in the hearts of the Taiwanese people and has laid the foundation for their identification with Chinese culture. And uh, to the new religious group, the same, we, we, we see the Chinese culture in the same way. During the period of martial law, all the religions and folk beliefs were suppressed, suppressed by the government and were seen as superstitious. In such atmosphere, most new religions established themselves aligned with the Chinese cultural renaissance policy and further consider themselves to have inherited the Chinese cultural tradition and develop, develop their innovative innovative interpretations. 
Therefore, the identification and self positioning of Chinese cultural tradition are crucial in the development of the new ethnic religions, such as the Xuanyuan Jiao Xuanyuan religion and the Iguan Dao. And uh, uh, due to the time limit, uh, I don't explain the the new religions. So, and the Tian De Jiao Tian De religion. And Tian Di Jiao, the Lord of Universe Church, they all see the Chinese cultural orthodox as their doctrine. Then in 1987, finally the martial law was lifted, and the Ministry of the Interior of Republic of China allowed new religious groups to register legally. To this day, the inherited orthodoxy of Chinese culture is still the focus of religion on both sides of the Taiwan Strait. Now, let me introduce Wei Xin Shen Jiao. Firstly, I would like to directly introduce its features. Uh, you can see uh, this is its distribution. In Taiwan, there are 50 branch temples, and around the world, there are eight, eight, eight branches. The features of Wei Xin Shen Jiao is that they advocate Chinese cultural tradition are Yi Jin and Feng Shui. Yi Jin is the book of the changes. Feng Shui is the um, uh, geometrically inspection. They believe that Wei Xin Shen Jiao itself is the inheritor of Chinese cultural traditions. And based on the skills of Yi Jin divination and Feng Shui, the religious order is formed by strengthening the spiritual practice of the religion. And they believe that the first and foremost point of religious practice is to care the mundane world, and only by living a peaceful life can human beings have time to pursue true spirituality. So Yi Jin and Feng Shui are the ways to help people live in peace and prosperity. So they claim to be the inheritor of the Chinese cultural tradition and pay special attention to the cross-trade relationships. The divinity revealed scriptures, rituals, and teachings are all focused on the harmony of the nations. Then this is the founder of Wei Xin Shen Jiao, uh, Grandmaster Hun Yuan Chan Shi. Now he is 80 years old. Uh, the reason he started his religious practice is the severe illness. And by the religious practice and self-cultivate, he, he recovered and mystically united with the Supreme God, our Supreme God, Gui Gu Zi. Then he got the uh, uh, special abilities to foresee the development of the society. And what is Gui Gu Zi? It's, uh, it's, uh, Gui Gu Zi means the sage of Ghost Valley. He was treated of politics and diplomacy that, that appeared uh, in warring states. He was the, uh, he opened the first school is diplomacy in human society and then become the Supreme God of Wei Xin Shen Jiao and united with Grand Master Hun Yuan Chan Shi. And the, this is the divine lineage, all very Chinese. The lineage is from Kunlun Mountain and has been passed down to modern Taiwan through Fuxi, Nuwa, Confucius, the 72 heavenly masters, the three Chinese ancestors, such like uh, Yellow Emperor, Yan Emperor, Chiyo Emperor, and Gui Gu Zi. Uh, Wei Xin Shen Jiao sees it, this is the real Chinese orthodoxy. Then uh, let me talk about the historical background of the rise of Wei Xin Shen Jiao. In 1980s, there was an economic boom in Taiwan. And Grandmaster Hun Yuan Chan Shi, he started his religious practice in 1980s. It was a time uh, the rapid arrival of the industrial and commercial society caused the value system of the traditional agricultural society to collapse. While the new social value beliefs and norms were not yet established, at this time, the allies and the middle class, they 
uh, have begun to consider the role and position of traditional culture in the modern context. Then in 1987, the martial law lifted, and the government opened up the registration of folk religions, and new religious groups sprang up, ushering in an era of religious freedom. Now, Weixin Shenjiao is the 28th religious group registered by the Ministry of the Interior in Taiwan. The fundamental beliefs of the Chinese people of Weixin Shenjiao, I can, I, I have, uh, uh, there are several points. The first is, they see the cross trade relationship is one family. Chinese cultural traditions remains in Taiwan. And Taiwan is the base of the Chinese cultural renaissances. Peace in cross-strait relations is the key to world peace. There should be equal dialogue in cross-strait relations. And the three principles of the people, democracy, and freedom are the shared values in the cross-strait relationship. Wei Xin Shenjiao insists. And lastly, what is Wei Xin Shenjiao's explanation for the conflict phenomenon among Chinese people? What has been done? Firstly, I would like to introduce the relation of the three Chinese ancestors and their influence on East Asia. The three Chinese ancestors, they all lived uh, in about 20,000 uh, before uh, BC. And uh, their, their, their position are not equal because in ancient times, um, the Yan Emperor and Yellow Emperor jointly attacked the Shiyo tribe and started the Battle of Zhuolu. And during the battle, Zhuo, uh, Shiyo was captured and killed, and his people fled to the border, border areas of northeast and southwest China becoming ethnic minor minorities such as Miao, Jiang, and Korea. And after Chiyo's defeat, Chinese historical literature since the phrase of Yan Emperor and Yellow Emperor, treating them as the originators of Chinese civilization. However, they treated Chiyo as a demon. And then, the stigmatized histo historical evaluation makes the grievances of Chiyo soul cannot be settled, and the grievances flow to later generations, forming the common grievances of the community. And the grievances were reincarnated and reborn by the souls, and leading to the wars among many countries. Therefore, the battle of Zhuo Lu, in the time of the three Chinese ancestors, was originally the cause of various wars in the world. You can see the picture, this is Shi Yo. In order to remedy the national grievances, uh, Wei Xin Shen Jiao think we must uh, redress the grievances of Shi Yo, because Grandmaster Hun Yuan Chan Shi believes that the prerequisite for world peace is that the spiritual world must first be at peace. In other words, the grievances of the spiritual world must first be redressed. So we should rely on the power of Buddha and deities. So the primary concern of Wei Xin Shen Jiao is to resolve the grievances between the three Chinese ancestors. He, they regard the East Asian people as a religious community. So, they, second, they launch some rituals and ceremonies. This, is, this picture is the Chinese ancestor worship ceremony. This ceremony is to uh, ease the tension of the cross trade in order to reject redress the grievances of Chiyo and rehabilitate Chiyo's historical status. From 2004 and 2020, Grandmaster Hun Yuan Chan Shi organized the Chinese United Ancestor Worship Ceremony and brought together overseas Chinese for tens of thousands of people at the dome on New Year's Day each year to worship the three Chinese ancestors. 
and many political figures came. This is the current president of Republic of China, Tsai Ing-wen. And this is Chen Shui-bian. He is the former president and the former vice president, N.H. Lu, Lu Xiu-lian, and the former president of the legislative Yuan, Wang Jinping. Um, uh, in addition, there are many Chinese people and officials invited to attend the ceremony. They try to do the cross-track communication, and they have a depart an association that is Taiwan Gui Guzi Academic and Research Association. This association organizes annual meetings with the Gui Guzi Academic Associations in mainland China. And they has a long history of friendly relations. There were many Chinese people came to the ancestors' worship ceremony. Then, in order to connect our small island Taiwan with the world, there is one ritual, very special ritual invented. That is a 99-day ritual. Pray for the peace of Taiwan. You can see the picture. This is the altar. In the middle of the altar, there is the Taiwan shape. Yeah, made by rice. Yeah, it's rice and made in Taiwan shape. Mm. Would you? Okay. Huh? Yes, yes. okay. In the middle, there is a pillar of peace. Then there are eight rows ropes uh, attached with the national flags mm -hmm. and then linking to eight directions of the world. And you can see the red papers are all are represent, uh, symbolizing the nations mm -hmm. around the world. And the, and the lotus, lotus light represent each nation. This is Australia. And there are parted flowers. Uh, symbolizes a uh, different country. Uh, the China, France, you can see France here, England here. Then in front of the altar there is a globe. We, we, we turn the globe every day and, and bless the globe, uh, uh, relying on the power of Buddha. This is the shape. Yeah. Okay, every day the, the the cultivators, the people, they they uh, offer the incense to each each nation, and offer the wine, rice wine, to each nation. Okay, the last is the cross trade activities. In nineteen uh, in nineteen ninety seven, Weixin Shen Jiao made its way to mainland China in the name of Gui Guzi culture. They built some some uh, places. Uh, the first place is the A Trigrams Holy City in Henan Province, China. The second is Yellow Emperor Shrine in Hebei Province. Then is the Chiyou Shrine in Hebei Province, and Guigu Academy. Okay, this is the conclusion. Is uh, the philosophy of peace in Weixin Shen Jiao? They have some points. Uh, value the history and feelings of the ethnic group. The cross strait separation is a tragedy of modern history. The emphasis uh, emphasis was placed on settling the grievances among three Chinese ancestors, so that the wars of future generations could be avoided. It is believed that achieving peace through peaceful means is true peace. Therefore, trans transcendent religious rituals are adopted to pray. cross trade exchanges are used to promote mutual understanding. Weixin Shen Jiao advocates reaching a cross trade consensus through Chinese culture and the culture of Gui Guzi. Religious practice is to transcend the limits of the human world and to rely on the divine power of the deity and Buddha to remove political suffering for the people. Thank you for the intention. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Chang. Uh, 
<clears throat> I will perhaps avail myself of my position to ask you a question, which is a question which also came to my mind lis listening to the other speakers. Um, you, you mention a lot in, in, uh, in your paper the work that is done uh, on the creating possibilities for a dialogue, for an exchange. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I heard the word exchange recur in other papers as well. Uh, and uh, this obviously uh, points in the direction of the importance of language and uh, learning how to speak the language of the other, that is being in a position where you can mediate, right, mm -hmm. uh, is obviously a very important part of the process of creating yeah. uh, this kind of possibility yeah. of exchange. I was wondering whether this, there was any work that was done in this direction that is promoting uh, world peace through uh, working on dialogue, the art of dialogue and speaking the language of the other, uh, because it, it seems to me that you showed the importance of rituals and ceremonies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But what about the, the, the problem of speaking, how, how you speak to the other? Yeah, um, uh, because we, we have the same language in cross stress, so um, we have the same culture, so it's uh, quite easy for people to exchange. And we, uh, before the COVID outbreak, we have many exchanges uh, uh, in, in the cross thread. And we uh, 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 exchange, uh, we promote the Gui Guzi culture because Gui Guzi is an ancient figure that they recognized by, by all the Chinese people. So we have the common, common senses with each other. Yeah, so we try to, um, try to strengthen our relationship to avoid the war. Yes. Yep. Thank you. But if I can add something, that means that you speak Chinese and varieties of Chinese because you don't have, you don't have a single Chinese language. But I think what my friend Charlie was referring to, he was asking about other languages to engage in dialogues. Well, with actually, the other countries. yes, I was also referring to discourse. That is the way you speak, um, the the words you choose, and uh, the space you give to the word of the other. This is what I call the art of dialogue, uh, which can call on uh, special techniques. You, you know, there are yeah. techniques uh, that can be worked on to develop a communication between warring parties. This is not easy, but I was wondering whether th this was part of the picture or yeah. not. Yeah, yeah, it's yes. the part of the picture. And to emphasize the three Chinese ancestors is quite important in our religion and, and quite... Um, the Chinese people, they they are they they also recognize recognize the the status of the, the three Chinese ancestors should be should be improved. Yeah, 